The killing of six North Korean soldiers in a Ukrainian missile strike on the occupied part of Donbass is further evidence of the formation of a closer Moscow-Pyongyang axis. It may also indicate further attempts by the Kremlin to form a kind of foreign legion for the war in Ukraine, writes the Italian newspaper Corriere della Sera. The publication notes that North Korea already provides the lion's share of artillery shells used by Russia at the front, but the North Korea also has a fairly large army. Given the high losses and constant need for new cannon fodder, Russia could rent a number of North Korean soldiers at least to perform auxiliary non-combat tasks, the publication writes. Although the Russian dictator himself has previously publicly stated that Russia does not need North Korean soldiers, the reality is somewhat more complicated. Russian telegram channels with contacts in the Russian Defense Ministry have been circulating rumors for several months about sending North Korean troops to Donbass, specifically several engineering brigades for construction work. South Korean journalists even managed to calculate that renting three to four North Korean engineering brigades would cost the Kremlin $115 million. The six North Koreans who died on Thursday during exercises certainly did not intend to repair roads. The whole story remains unclear, but it contains a double lesson, writes Corriere de la Serra. The first conclusion the paper draws is that the Moscow-Pyongyang-Tehran-Beijing axis, which supports Russia's actions in Ukraine, is becoming increasingly recognizable. The second conclusion is that Putin's strategy of forming a kind of foreign legion is also becoming increasingly clear. Its generals give orders to attack without caring about saving lives. So the Kremlin needs foreigners to throw into the fire and it recruits them by criminal means. The newspaper writes citing examples of how Moscow has deceitfully lured citizens of India, Cuba, African countries and even at least one Dane to the front. But the main source of Putin's foreign legions are Tajiks, Kazakhs and other migrants from Central Asia. True, in their case, the scheme is somewhat different. They are not so much lured to Russia from their home countries as those who are already in Russia are forced to sign up for the front under the threat of arrest and deportation. According to estimates, with such tricks, the Kremlin was able to send several thousand foreigners to the front with tens of thousands more in conditional reserve. A series of explosions were heard over Beirut's southern suburbs after the Israeli military demanded evacuations for some areas while Hezbollah said it was engaged in continued clashes with Israeli troops in the Lebanon border area. Israel said it had targeted the intelligence headquarters of Hezbollah in Beirut and was assessing the damage after a series of strikes on senior figures in the militant group that Iran's supreme leader condemned as counterproductive. Enemy warplanes launched two strikes on the southern suburbs, the first targeted the St. Therese area, and the second targeted the Burj al barajna area, Lebanon's national news agency said. An Israeli military statement said the Army of Israel had struck Hezbollah terrorist targets and weapon storage facilities in Beirut. Israeli warplanes hit targets belonging to Hezbollah's intelligence headquarters in Beirut, the statement added. They had also hit Hezbollah weapons storage facilities in the area of Beirut. Reporting secondary explosions after the strikes, indicating the presence of weaponry. Earlier, Israel military spokesman Avichay Adri issued an urgent warning to the residents of the southern suburb of Burj al barajna and Hadith to leave these areas. Lebanon's Hezbollah movement and its foe Israel have been exchanging near-daily cross-border fire for nearly a year in fallout from the Gaza war. But since September 23, Israel has launched devastating airstrikes on targets in Lebanon. The UN peacekeeping force in Lebanon, known as UNIFIL, said that it would not leave positions in the country's south despite what it said was an Israeli request to relocate from some of them. Peacekeepers remain in all positions and the UN flag continues to fly, it said. Lebanon's government says more than 2,000 people have been killed there in the past year, with most in the past two weeks. A UN spokesperson, Stefan Dejaric, called the toll on civilians totally unacceptable.